that's the plan. So at the moment, <clears throat> we're going to be here kind of this time, two till four on Thursdays, um, and we'll be doing that quite regularly um, while we do all this kind of rehearsal type stuff. We will start to um, do more read throughs, cast it, and then we'll film it when the weather's warmer. You'll be pleased to hear. <laughs> so that's the plan. It's just so we can hear it, and that way we can see whether it works as a as a piece of writing or whether we need to tweak it and change it. And then we need a mark so we and a key. I'll put possible montage of meetings. Wetlands came about as originally an idea by one um, of our previous artistic directors, George Fleming, who came up with this idea of um, creating a film based around uh, homelessness and this idea of the wetlands. I think we need to have another little chat, just to refresh your memory. Whoa, Mr. Green. <laughs> <laughs> well done. You're the bad boy. <laughs> The Wetlands Project is a community project uh, working with homeless people or people who have been homeless. Um, it's covering a very difficult subject which is homelessness and uh, we look at it through the eyes of the Wetlands Project. Wetlands Project is a project run by a woman who believes that she has the solution to life's problems for these homeless people. They got me into the hostel and they got me into the wetlands. What's that? What is it, Centre? <laughs> no, mate. There are many different people in the uh, film who all suffer with a problem. They need a solution, and there is this woman who offers that solution. I'm not going to tell you what happens because that would spoil it for you, um, but there is a twist in the programme, and uh, that solution may not be quite as good as we hope it might be. Any volunteers? I was going to say victim for a second, but uh, anybody, anybody that wants to read the part of the woman. And be ready for total isolation. You must cut all ties from everyone while you are here on phase two. I know that and believe me, I'm ready. And um, we've worked on and off with um, Cypher Fireside and Crisis for a number of years now. Um, and we feel quite passionately about how important it is that people that have um, experienced homelessness get the opportunity to be creative and um, come up with their own um, creative works and not simply be on film when it's about a kind of documentary if you like um, what what's it what's it like for them to be homeless it's really important um, that they get that, that 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 this is a fictional story and and it is quite dark and it is quite dramatic but it's got something to say a little while ago we managed to get some funding in place to be able to start exploring that idea with a group of uh, people that we'd worked with on a previous film called Life and Love in 10 Songs. Rewrite that script from their own perspective, uh, making changes that uh, made the story more relevant to their own experiences. And what we did from that was to write some uh, character vignettes which kind of exemplified the kind of situations our core characters were going to be in. Uh, and we filmed those uh, in a way that what we see and what we hear kind of show the two sides of their experiences and what they're going through. To begin with, the first four or five weeks even, all we did was read through the entire script, each taking turns as, as, they, as each of us feel, felt comfortable, uh, just to get the story and what has been written by the the author. There's only the woman in it. Is it there's only the woman in it? Yeah. Mr it's Green is in the background. He doesn't No, but I will write a scene now with the woman and Mr Green talking afterwards. But at the moment that's not been written. Because it's only been discussed today. We will see you in the I'm, audience yeah. though. Mm -hmm. So you will good, be seen on the screen <laughs> and you'll be like oh, your eyes will be light off because you'll be going Cash, ching, ching, cash. Michael, you can, you can write a script, uh, a script to a, like a conversation between Mr. Green and the woman. Yeah. Right, which shows that Mr. Green don't care. Oh, what yeah. What he's I mean, interested in is making money. Ka-ching, I can make money out of your, yeah. your charity, love. If you want to give me money, that's fine by me. 
Um, but I'll, I'll, we'll work on that next time. We wanted to have a kind of writer's room approach to how we then explored that script so that everyone had a chance to contribute to the way that the characters developed, how the scenes linked, whether we needed to add in any extra scenes, were we missing anything, did we need to um, make any more establishing um, scenes um, and so on. And that was a really exciting process because it gave people a chance to um, read aloud scenes without the pressure of being that character straight away. It, um, ex it allowed us to explore the subject um, that we were doing um, and it really um, added to, I think, the whole process of, of coming up with that final script. So I feel I already know you. Why didn't you have a seat? You seem deeply stressed. She pours him a drink, but he refuses to take it. Sit down for a while and tell me about it. I may be able to help you. You can benefit from time in here with me. I can help you to undo the pains of the past. Do you know my past? Then we progress to um, adding our own little idea of how the character should sound or perhaps a little action or but still seated and uh, then we started going up to the front like to uh, walk out the little speeches and the, um, the little details. Sure, I know you'll get some touch with it. My dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of people, like I say, uh, you know, putting uh, the scenery to the situations and again, how sort of people would react to each other in, in each scene. So. It's yeah, there's been a lot of input from, from everybody, so it's been quite a, quite a journey, quite a journey. And from there, we um, had the chance to, people were playing different characters. Um, so again, it wasn't cast straight away and people started to really get a feel for who they wanted to play, which was quite exciting to see. And then from there, we saw how much the um, confidence of people this, grew, which was great. This is a list of clients that have recently been referred to the Wetlands project. Where did you get that? Well, as we weren't having any more secrets, I kind of broke into Green's office last night. Keith? Yeah, I know, I know. I never thought I was a people person and I never thought I could speak in public. Uh, but now, they're my two biggest strengths. Uh, I've realised that I am a people person and I can talk in front of people and I'm even uh, considering taking that forward into a new career opportunity. Learning about screen craft, the how to perform in front of a camera. Uh, some of them have been used to doing stuff as drama in plays, so the idea of acting for screen is a little different. So we're kind of going through that process at the moment, uh, and it does mean that we can kind of shift and refocus certain scenes as people kind of let us know the reality of what those situations would be for somebody in in those kind of situations. I understand, but really, I'm not that bad. And yet, you came here tonight, didn't you? Yeah, but that was for Kate. <coughs> Does Kate have a drinking problem? No. I'm making the point that I think... Is that preemptive? Paulie has More to kind of cajole him. Come on, come it's on, more. Keith. If this is really true to life... I'm you wrong what she says there? I don't have to say nothing no. on any meeting. And... So he wouldn't kind of... I'm never cajoled in a <coughs> meeting. Okay. It's up to me to say when I want to say. Uh, well, we don't go around the circle no. then. Oh, I just, I've never been to well. So, I thought that's how long. So people will go for months and not They do, months. but no, if you was the first one there, you don't have to say anything. Uh, the first night. There's been a lot of changes, a lot of positive changes, obviously. It's more now, the characters are becoming more three dimensional than just, and they're coming off the page. It's obviously knowing people now and having, obviously, it's kind of a constant of who's here every week, so we kind of know each other and everything, so it's easier to act <laughs> with people than not know. being funny, though. Um, you know, people do do that. I know. Do first. One of the, the, the best things was actually uh, when Keith organised the, the printing of the script into a sort of a, a properly bound thing, and to actually pick up that and to know that to a certain extent I had written that 
was was just something it was almost a very emotional moment I was almost like a tear in my eye um, and it, it felt such a, an achievement um, someone who's perhaps had a, a difficult past who's made lots of mistakes in my life to actually through this project to be able to produce something that is good and it looks good and uh, not just my own work obviously we've worked as a team we've uh, refined the writing but the fundamental storyline has come uh, out uh, from stuff that's been in my head and has come down onto paper uh, that's just priceless so now that people are um, acting out and the, the, the characters have been cast uh, we're starting to think about um, how the characters dress, what props we need, what locations we're going to be shooting in. It's very exciting that we'll be shooting at Middleton Lakes for the wetlands area, um, but now we need to find the other locations that we're going to need, which is quite exciting. Um, so people are starting to think about their costumes for themselves, which is great, and then we'll go sourcing for things that we need. Um, and then, of course, we'll start thinking about costume and makeup. Um, and again, this will be a collaborative um, way of working. People will contribute, we'll go looking together, and we'll, we'll, we'll create those characters in, in life. Um, and it's, it's exciting to see how excited people are when it kind of starts to come together and feel real. So although we're rehearsing in the space in our studio at the moment, once we start to go out on location and just test things out on the camera, it will start to become even more real, which is great. You see, it's really good. It's a really good plot. Really good. Really impressed. I can't really answer what I like most. I just like it. I think it's a good story. Um, and it has a proper story at the end of it, like, you know what I mean? Sort of. It's a twist at the end. Oh, shit, Kathy. Yes. How did you know her name? I've always meant to her Then you must be. You must be. Dun 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 dun. Tune in next day. week to find out what you must be. Must you build a wetland? You get more confident each year. Each year you suddenly come to, you'll get more confident. No, this is new thing I'm doing. Um, you won't be seeing me around for a while. Where are you going then? Phase two. It's uh, totally immersive. It's therapy. I don't know what the fuck it is. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. I like the fact that it's uh, it actually has a message. It's a it's a story which I need reminding that it's an, an analogy of something. It's a uh, it's a, a description of issues that are current in society at the moment, like homelessness, austerity. Yeah, we see a couple of other people walk past. People yeah. walk past. <laughs> The boots appear. You <laughs> <laughs> see what banks <laughs> Well, fuck me, but he's not Mark. Um, I never thought I'd see you again. Pete, mate, how you doing? Well, you know how it is, ducking and diving, wheeling and dealing. Don't suppose he's got a fag. <laughs> I'm in a hostel at the moment. Um, do I get enough dosh to get my own place? It really helps. I did so well at the first stage, she's lined me up to go into phase two sometime next week. So you won't see me around for a while. Where are you going then? Yeah, I'm so wondering. Definitely. Because you kind of seem a bit... Odd. I'm not... I'm <laughs> <doing that. laughs> Don't be personal, <laughs> Keith. I'm just, you know, because it just seems uncomfortable because yeah, you kind of stand up. That, I'm wondering, that, I'm wondering that, whether... At, at the point where you go, when Steve's kind of Steve <laughs> sat down with his stuff running, he goes, "Ah, oh, welcome to my humble abode." Maybe I'll when you go, down, yeah. "Shit, yeah. mate, you can do better than this." Look, tell you what, <sighs> mm. I have one of my fags. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you are you all right finding your way to Michael's on 
on Friday, on Thursday, Friday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, which I'll just get some jeans for. But that, that's what's going to end up coming out of the, um, out of the water. Yeah. And just so that the audience can Identify see it. Yeah. just that bit of like electrical tape on the, on the one shoe. Mm -hmm. So one of the shots we'll do today will be quite low. Yeah. Cut there, Steve. Just stop, cut there, that's perfect. Uh, Rich, can you say, tell, tell us what, you, what you've got? That's yes, a good yes. shot. What happens if we go? There might be fine. Test, test. Yeah. And the way you looked, perfect. The fact that the, the, the there was a little bit of extra kind of noise, but I think with a bit of coverage, we should do it. You looked great on camera. Not like me. These these look, guys look photogenic. On the cameras, I've acted on stage. It's a slightly different to. Um, it's just a long stage. time ago. Yeah, it is slightly different. Yeah, so it's, it's cool. I, I like the, the idea. It's. Uh, it's a new experience, that's always good. Keep learning, growing and developing. Yeah, I like it, yeah. I like driver. It makes you feel good, yeah. <laughs> now, Steve's got a basic screen. He's got very character place. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Um, Look at his face, it's like, yeah. So, the, yeah, they both, all their faces tell a story as well, which is kind of nice. The, the, the biggest trouble we've got is the lack of control over a lot of our locations because we're trying to do it very naturalistic looking. So the fact today we've had a lot of traffic and um, stuff going through. So it's difficult for these guys to be able to deliver their dialogue when we've not got the control of, of, of our sound. But hopefully you'll come together. But they've done a fantastic job so far. Good. Thanks, director. I take those people that the world wishes to ignore and I allow them to escape to a new reality. I face their pains, their confusions, and I take them away. Where is the solution? You know, and obviously the solution isn't to get people to kill themselves, but there must be a solution and it's a solution that needs to be found. So I'm hoping that the film will trigger people to think to think about this subject because it is a serious subject. You know, in the light of what we said, it is a very serious subject and it is an expanding subject and it's not going to go away. But the whole process was really, really well organised. Um, yeah, I enjoyed every, every single bit of it, from the um, getting, going through the script in the, originally in the beginning and seeing if that's how you really thought the character would behave, would act, etc. to the actual uh, filming process. It was yeah. so enjoyable. I enjoyed every single second of it. Society fails them. It wants to ignore them. It wants them to just disappear. Surrounded in black, looks quite... Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Kind of, kind of cool in the sense of... Um, uh, this scene was um, basically explaining to people, as she sees it, nobody really cares about uh, homeless people uh, and because of government cutbacks, etc. Uh, they're finding it hard to uh, subsidise uh, the, the, uh, their organisations. So she's sort of basically saying that because she's so wealthy and she has no need for money, that she's doing this purely out of love. Though I believe there is obviously a sinister side to her as she's uh, getting them to kill themselves. But uh, she, yeah, she's just trying to explain to people that so she's gathered this knowledge, a host of knowledge from all over the world. And uh, that knowledge is, is to be uh, trusted. Oh, I'd love to. But less. Can we just stop getting you drifted a little bit too far to that side? So you go that way a little bit, Natasha. Oh my to your left. That's it. That's good. Yeah. There. And when you're ready. Oh, I'd love to. But alas, I have a client coming to me this afternoon. He's about to move into phase two of the Wetlands project. His problems will soon be gone forever. It's maybe a bit. Maybe. Cut, good, nice, print, excellent, right. Ultimate side now. So we'll have a look at him to start with. We'll see you coming down the corridor. No, Keith, you have it all wrong. I was there with him, yes. Confession is good for the soul. So if the truth is out, have you slept with him too? Is he better than me in bed? Probably got, got more money than me. Is that what you like about him? You shut your fucking mouth, Keith. Oh, you aren't going to deny it then? You know what, Keith? Fuck you. I don't need this shit anymore. I've put up with the secrets you keep from me, the stuff in your past that you just flat out refuse to share, but I would not stand here and let you accuse me of some sick perverted affair with Mr Green of all people. You know what, Keith? I'm glad your mother's dead, because if she was alive, she'd be ashamed of you. Facts of life, Keith. There's more than just you in this world. Oh! Wow. Yeah, you need to work on that. <laughs> We're not getting it at all. <laughs> you said I'm without looking at the lines as well. That's really good. Well done. And the bed isn't too difficult. And a splash in the bathroom. Yeah. So this scene 20 for you and Sophie, in terms of a walkthrough, Sophie will be outside with a carrier bag with some milk in. Shay, on, on action for this one, you're going to come in from the bathroom. So you could start in the bathroom if you want. Walk through into the kitchen when I need you to come in. And Shay, I'll need you in the bathroom. So you'll need to start in the bathroom. I'm going to do the whole thing. You're going to come from the bathroom and in, yeah, just so I can follow that. So on the first action, Shay, that's you into the kitchen. Scene 20, take, I don't know. Scene 20, uh, Shay and Kate in the kitchen. Sophie and, no, Keith and Kate in the kitchen, take one. Action, Shay. So go from the truth from now on, if you can, Sophie. Things make it hard, but we'll get through it, and I'll always be there for you. I think I need to talk to Keith. So, go again. Go again. Why are you still here? Okay, why are you still here? Keith, you're a drunken, stupid, pig ignorant bastard, but believe it or not, I love you. What? What? I know. Know what? Know what? Things will go wrong, but I'm here for you. I need to talk to Mark. I've got so many questions, so many things I need to know. I get that, but go gentle on him. It has come as a shock to him too. Keith? Yes. That's good. Right, okay. So I've just got to change the memory cards in the camera for a moment, and then we'll do the reverse, Shay. So I'll need you out. Oh, sorry, sorry. Really uh, hooked, uh, flying through that door. <laughs> but the process, 
which I was very nervous about was being in front of camera and at the very start I said under no circumstances will I be doing that I will be behind camera all the time so I guess it's building up the confidence to actually come in front of camera and do a bit of acting uh, and at any one stage you have three cameras on there without feeling nervous I was forgetting there was there when on day one I can see them oh my god panic stations Steve yeah then we'll just do the shot with Soph oh yes which, which is in the kitchen you can have the keys okie dokie alright do a close up of you and it's all your dialogue keep on is that ok yeah you yeah. you're going to be a Five ten minutes, aren't you, Steve? I can be, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I have about like four facts in that. Just, just so that you don't come back in if we're in the middle of um, the dialogue. So it will be about, will be about five minutes. Uh, I'll give you ten. Just be on the side, all right. Star. Kate's dialogue, scene twenty, take one. Action. How are you feeling? What? Uh, what? You're still here. More for me. Have you been crying? Why are you still here? Keith, you're a pig ignorant bastard, but believe it or not, I still love you. What? Because I knew you were struggling with your drinking, your spouse of depression, your angry person act. I did it because I love you, and even though I don't quite know why, I still love you. What? <laughs> First day filming, <clears throat> a little bit nerve wracking because of not having learnt my lines off, off by heart, so a little bit apprehensive, but surprisingly relaxed now because it's kind of panned out okay, so it's gone better than I expected without the idiot board. <laughs> oh, yeah, actually, from when I met uh, Keith and Laura, two, must be two years, two years ago now. Two and a bit years ago. My God. And Michael, the first time I met Michael. Uh, I've learned loads about just what we were discussing then, about continuity and uh, completely different to what my hobby was before this, which was gay drama, where you have to project to the audience, and that, but this is completely different dynamic altogether, and it's good to get to know how the camera works and uh, the lighting and all that stuff and sound. Uh, really, and it's also learning this uh, screenplay stuff. Because I'm doing a class at Crisis now, which is about writing a screenplay. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, so, all good experience for the future. Down that side, can we bring it far enough across? I've been busy uh, working most of the time, so I haven't been able to see all of the filming. But it's been interesting uh, seeing the different scenes coming together. Um, and uh, I'll be ha happy to get my home back and putting everything back where it lives and where it's been moved but that's part of being a location um, but yeah I think it'd be, it's an exciting project and it's exciting to see it coming now to life as we film and uh, hopefully it's going to look really good on the screen I know with Keith's uh, editing skills we'll be on, in safe hands because you don't take it off until you come back into this room. Okay, recording. Drunk in bed, take one. Action! I'll wait in the front room for you. Okay. I know what's wrong here. Cut. Okay. What's that? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter because you're going to roll around. It doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. Doesn't matter. Can we do one more? I was just wondering why that one later with Kate. That's a totally different day. Oh, is it? Yeah. After drunkenness, they're going to bed with 
days later. So it's all, <laughs> all in the magic of mystery movies. Oh, great. So one, just one more time, guys. Yeah, I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm tired from yesterday. <laughs> so today has been a bit. My learning my dialogue hasn't been as easy today as it was yesterday because I'm tired. <laughs> I can think of. <laughs> I think we've got everything, so that will be... Yeah, it'll be a relief in a way because this project has taken a long time. Um, we started in November 2017 um, and then there was a, a year of fundraising um, and then this year we've been working at it since January. We're now into June and we're now starting to film. So it's a long process, so it will be exciting uh, to see it finally in the can, as it were. So today we've been filming on some um, external locations. In the, in the morning we were filming at Artifact Caf in Searchley. And then this afternoon we've been at Cars Lane Church where we've been shooting the um, AA uh, meeting sequence. Um, so one of our performers wasn't able to attend this afternoon. So uh, what we had to do is uh, one of our extras um, volunteered to step in at the last minute. So um, we've had to kind of change the sex of the character, which is fine because um, the kind of issues that we're talking about in this film are not gender specific. This is something that can happen to, to anybody really of any age or any gender. Um, so she's been able to step in and we've just turned a Scott into a Sandra. Uh, because we're kind of, you know, inventive with our names. Um, and she's done a great job uh, of stepping into that. Because I'm in the choir with no name for homelessness. And the thing is, I'm homeless myself. And um, I heard about it that they were coming to Fleming, and I like Fleming and casting, so I volunteered to be a part as an extra. So yesterday when I went, I was so lucky to get a scene and a role which I played Sandra. It was very nice, very exciting, I loved it. And I asked Sam um, to say I want to become part of the whole organisation. Because as I'm homeless myself, and the theme is about homelessness, it's really, really interesting what people are doing because we've been rejected, we've been living on the streets, I've been sleeping roughly for five months, and I'm still homeless, so coming into a scene with homelessness is really, really good for me. Just the way you position perfect. Yeah. Do you want to do the spritz and yeah. do you want to do it with the circle? Do you just want to do the bit that you... Yeah. So the Why don't we do the bit that you two do together? Boy's come back after um, some time away where he hasn't been able to kind of get to rehearsals and, uh, and nailed it really. He's, he's a, facially, he's very expressive, he's got a great voice, uh, looks really good on camera. AA meeting, close up coordinator, take two, action. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for sharing, Trevor. Um, before we all finish, we've got some refreshments over there. Would anyone else like to share? Hi, my name is Santa. It's mad because um, I'm, I'm an alcoholic myself, so to play an alcoholic coordinator is really a bit surreal. It's a bit surreal. Do you know what I mean, surreal? Um, it's, it's, it's weird for me to be looking at it on the other side rather than on that side. I'm normally looking at the AA coordinator, but I'm the AA coordinator looking down at them. So it's it's changed roles you know what I mean yeah. and how do you feel about that because it's, well, it's all right yeah it's cool it's going to be good when we see it on YouTube it'd be brilliant yeah, yeah, yeah. and my my family are all looking forward to it yes uh, and Shay and the rest of the performers again as well have been able to kind of do what we've needed in order to make this um, little sequence work so it's quite a powerful bit it's where one of the characters um, the main characters kind of finally admits to himself and to the people around him that he actually has a problem. My name is Keith and I'm an alcoholic. I'm in a relationship with Keith and I'm in fear of losing it, but I will do anything in my power to keep it. Well done, well done Keith, well done for coming. You made the initial step, I can do it. It's the no. scene where Kate's having an affair with Mr. Green. <laughs> he thinks he, he thinks Kate's having an affair with Mr. Green. One action. He needs support, not terrible. It's hard to say. 
Cut, lovely, I can use that. Okay. Oh good, you're in. Interacting when I got the opportunity to work with Real Access on the Wetlands project, I totally jumped to the chance. Like today, I've had a really great day, it's been so much fun. 69% of the people who come through the bridge calf return time and time again. They're stuck in an eternal loop and it's costing us a fortune. I've really enjoyed the day. I've had great fun playing the character of Mr. Green. As soon as I read the script and I read his, about his character, I felt so that it was so close to how I am when I'm working. I do work in the catering industry, and um, I've always been like a sort of yuppified person, uh, very bold, very business-like. So. I thought that's absolutely perfect and the background of Mr Green uh, running a, a cafe in a, like a drop-in centre is similar to the role I do anyway so I, I thought it, it would be such an easy character for me to be able to play because it's literally what I do already. And money, it's money, something you know this charity has got a limited amount of. I walked away from my manic and never really found out if it was really being unfaithful. That's part of the reason I could come back here. One way or another, I will put the demons of the past behind me. Did you have any children? Yeah. Ring, 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 ring. Sorry. Uh, do you mind if I just grab this? Yeah, go ahead, mate. Mark is a lot like me, to be fair. Uh, it's fine. Yeah. Although I'm not actually in this position now, I have been, so I can relate to it. Oh, you know, life's sort of a, a learning curve, in it? So, you know, just one of them things, you make decisions, some right, some wrong. Just got to face the consequences. Yeah, yeah, but you need a reason to change, I think. You know what I mean? Sort of, yeah, yeah, everybody can change. I will put the demons on the past behind me. I think a lot of people will kind of see themselves in some of the characters. There's, the characters are very much alike a lot of people around, so a, a people are going to see a lot of themselves in that character and find the subjects kind of irrelevant to them. Yeah, I, I love the character. I think she's amazing. And obviously, when she doesn't just she doesn't take anything from anyone. She's just herself through the whole thing but she doesn't try and change herself for anyone come on let, let's 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 see if we can get you home and then you stumble in and then you kind of like into his face go oh yeah thanks mate i always had a dad like you yeah. so it's a little bit more as, as you're walking along so you kind of much more like yeah, they're they're against against you. a very handsome man you know Around. Mm -hmm. No, he's, you're not giving him anything else to drink yeah. and you want his friend. You can Scene 18, wide, take one. Action. Keith. Margay, Margay. You go so well then. Well, well, she can go fuck herself. He is. It's got a few similarities to me. We've got, we seem to have been on a similar journey. So uh, I kind of can relate to him and how he'd be feeling at the moment if he thought his loved one was cheating on, cheating on him. So I can relate to that. Oh, would he battle with addiction and stuff as well? Uh, so I can relate to that as well. So he's... Uh, He's, I can relate to his low self-esteem and where he'd be at in, a, in that point in life. Uh, so, but 
he's also going now seeking help, which similar journey to myself. I just started seven, no, 15 years ago. But uh, so Keith has got a long journey ahead of him. <laughs> Good luck to him. Take care, give it up. Look after him. I wish I had a dad like you, man. Okay. Take care, look after yourself. Cheers, boss. Come on, mate. Where are we are And cut. Okay. How do you like that? Okay. Pretty good. You can't see him. You can't see him fully. I don't think it's going to work. Like. It probably will. Why are you joking? I, 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 I used to be a barman. <laughs> and what we actually do, and it's great experience I must admit because when I, I didn't realise when I became homeless that um, I didn't realise that I could do things I'm doing now um, and support the people that went through what I was going through and it's you know I wish I could like I've only been in like the choir for just over two years now and obviously like the money that we do and all the support that we give it's absolutely amazing I can't like thank the choir for like not not through the choir um it's because like i was in like um in to be honest like in dire straits to the legs. Yeah. Ah. Um, <laughs> Hello. I'm, I'm this boots assistant. Oh, right. What an accolade. In the credits. In the credits. <laughs> boots assistant. <laughs> assistant to Pete's boot. Uh, I'm here today to film the last final scenes, climax of the Wetlands film project. Action. And I think what we feel really strongly about is that the the characters in, in Wetlands really represent where we are at the moment about how um, homelessness is being brushed onto the carpet. The problem is just growing and we're not dealing with the root issues of it. Um, and as dark as Wetlands is, um, you know, there is hope and there is light at the end of the tunnel. Are you sure where everything stays in camera? Yeah, that's yeah. fine. We will need a couple of extra close-up bits yeah, and pieces. Yeah, absolutely. There's no one here. And I, uh, I felt some kind of feeling towards the woman. Not that I'm a murderer or anything like that. <laughs> but um, I just felt that I could add something to the, to the woman. So um, that's basically been my part. I've been a little bit out during the beginning of the, of the process, so I wasn't involved you know, hugely in uh, the beginning part of it. Was to say, relax. Yeah, and then she sort of, sort of whispers in his ear, really, sort of, you know, uh, I can, I can help you, you know, I can undo everything. I think there will be uh, uh, mixed reviews on the the woman's solution. So it's quite a tricky question that one. Of, but I still believe that she. I think she's doing the right thing. She's she's not a murderer in her mind. So whether she'd get off on, on an insanity charge. So she wouldn't be a cold blooded murder. She's she honestly thinks she's doing it. so I've got a tad of sympathy for her. <laughs> I'm too soft hearted on <laughs> I might even give her a not guilty. Much more into the space, Steve. Yeah, kind of there. I love the main message behind it, which is that, yes, unfortunately, there are people without homes and there are people are, are desperate uh, to have somewhere that they can call a safe home. I think it, it puts across a stronger, stronger message if you sort of put a, a play where people or actually involved in being homeless, then he puts across a bigger message. It's brilliant, that is, you know. Don't say that to Theresa May, mate. You're putting it in, I'm telling you. It's just... 
one of the biggest things about wetlands is the fact that it's addressing a lot of issues in terms of how society and how the system um, thinks it can deal with these problems and how sometimes it leaves people feeling invisible and that people aren't being treated on an individual basis, that everybody gets lumped into the same box and that one solution will not fix um, a problem as big and as complicated and as difficult as things like homelessness is. Uh, and hopefully the idea of one solution is not the solution. Everybody needs something different. Everybody's got a different story. Everybody's got a different reason for why they're in the situation they're in. And that as a society, we need to treat that holistically and that everybody needs a different kind of support. In real terms, we have to um, make change and we, we want our audience and we want people that see wetlands to, to say it as a call, and of call to action really and, and kind of say enough is enough because, you know, um, are we actually headed for this kind of attitude to, to the problem of homelessness really? Um, you know, it's nobody's fault. People can find themselves in this situation uh, through no fault of their own and, um, and to treat it in, in such a way never helps. It's never the answer. I think it'll bring it more to the front and centre of things like obviously homelessness is a big thing in, in the UK there's probably more people that are homeless than ever and it kind of brings that subject and helps people understand the subject a bit more I've still got to do the hostel shop but it's an, an, uh, an analogy which means it's open to interpretation and it means that it it, it, it is uh, Maybe it's like a provocation to goad you to thinking for yourself and to think about what you would decide. I hope the message that comes behind it will actually have an effect on, on people that will actually make people stop and think about homelessness and ask the question, yeah, is there more we can do? What can we do to try and resolve this issue of homelessness? It's a, it's a, it's a mountain. Um, but maybe it's a mountain that together we can climb. It uh, gives a sense of uh, a sense of belonging, a, a, a sense of uh, teamwork, uh, working towards a, a common goal, which is trying to eradicate homelessness. Because if everyone deserves a chance, everyone deserves a safe place to call home, and it's not fair, it's not right that anyone should be forced out onto the street for any reason. So I think it, it is definitely something that, that needs to be tackled uh, uh, urgently. They're going to be shocked. I think it's going to be a shocker and it'll be, it's a bit hard, hard hitting, hard lines. I think they, I think they like it. It's a story that touches everyone. Everyone knows a homeless person or an alcoholic or someone who's on drugs. Everyone knows someone who's like that. So it's a scene that everyone knows. So it should be, to be close to their, their heart sort of thing, you know what I mean? And truly enjoy. And to be given the chance to do something like this is fantastic. Because you you can, like I say, you immerse yourself in this project and uh, forget about the problems and, 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 and things of the past and get yourself to do something creative and enjoyable. So I think things like this are absolutely essential to people's recovery, mm. absolutely essential. Wetland should invite people like GPs, doctors, nurses, and all these people to let them see what the movie is. And I think it might be opening their minds about homelessness and mental health. And I am homeless, but I try to be very strong. Many times I break down, but I try to be strong. And I think we, somebody could just help because sometimes we shout for help but nobody try to see us and I think when you haven't experienced it it's very easy to say oh these people you know oh it's their own making it's their own problem they've done it all to themselves whereas actually that's that's not the truth that's not the truth and anybody can find themselves in that situation you know it's not the old saying there for the grace of God go I and it's so so true it can happen to anybody at any time it really has no preference as to who you are you know being homeless and going an addiction so 
you know, I, th I think it's very important that people get get to know that, they like say, it does and it does and can affect anybody and everybody. And I think with something like this, okay, it's not a good idea to go around sort of making people kill themselves, you know. But um, you know, I think it's it's good for people to realise that you know there, there's still a big question out there, and there's still a big gap. as to how we're going to solve this problem. I've enjoyed it. I liked the um, coming each week and meeting people, meeting new people, taking their part and putting themselves into, you know, developing their character. And to um, be involved in other projects. Um, Depending what they are, <laughs> not depending what they are, whatever they are. My experience has been absolutely brilliant from starting out roughly 18 months ago, was it a year, 18 months, something like that, uh, doing the vignettes, getting to know how the camp filming works, the screenplay, the script, and look how the, <clears throat> the behind the camera stuff works. Really interesting, really educational. I'm hoping people pick up on uh, certain attributes of everybody, and I'm certainly hoping that uh, it helps to uh, catapult my career, definitely. And uh, yeah, it's a good film, so I'm hoping it'll uh, it'll tread the boards. Really fun um, to meet new people, and obviously to different characters than what I'm used to. The sort of supernatural stuff and like vampires and stuff and something dark but with a little bit of humour. Okay. From here, yeah, it's from here because that's where yeah. she starts doing yeah, it's quite this stupid <laughs> long paragraphs. Okay, you don't even deny it. It's good, it's good. I went to, I went to Mr. Green, yes, but asking for help for you because like the job of yours was killing you. Just imagine this with a crew of 20 <laughs> plus lights. <laughs> I can imagine. Okay. This is why I do community filmmaking. <laughs> because you can fit everywhere. Because you can fit everywhere. Yeah, it's just <laughs> one man and his camera. Just read everything. Stuck to you still, Steve. I couldn't let the shot go on with you just with a bit of um So if you if you just turn off where you are and you're just gonna reply with the mark. <laughs> Rose could be. Roger. Roger. <laughs> um, Rose in the cafe lady. Oh, yeah. But it, it, yeah. it could be the cafe man. The cafe, the cafe man. In fact, I think it probably is going to be. It will be. The cafe. It will be a man. Oh, Steve, would you like to be the cafe man? Yeah, you like to be the cafe man. <laughs> are, you, are you good at being. <laughs> You said that about moving your lips, Steve. <laughs> I'll drink my coffee and then I'll tell you. <laughs> um, yeah, not clever. Is that, are they, what are they doing? Maybe the, uh, like... Okay, they're going to stop. <laughs> 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 you see, every time I put the headphones on, I take them off. Two lives later. It's the only trouble with, that, with shooting when it's, like, real locations. Do you have any children? Yeah. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. Um, so, do you mind if I grab this? Go ahead. Kate, I'm kind of busy right now. Keith, I've been in a car accident. Hey, what's up? My head, I never hurt myself and the car. Is the car hurt? <laughs> Me? No, but I am. What are we waiting for? For the vacuum okay, cleaner, yeah, because on, like every other time you film anywhere, <laughs> hoovers, <laughs> chainsaws, Cellar. leaf blowers, what? industrial drilling, and drilling, drilling. <laughs> and a fly. fly oh yeah, yeah. Fly. Fly. I'll put a credit at the end for the fly. Oh. Little, little icon of a fly at the end. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get straight to the point. It's your success to fail rate. Right? Have you seen my report? I'll get straight to the point. Your success to fail rate, have you seen my report? Three cards. This is the last one, and then I'm going back to the office. So I know you've got film to make, but this yeah, is important. Yeah, shit. <laughs> this is the last. <laughs>
Okay. In this deck of cards, there is the ace, the two, and the three of diamonds. Yeah. And just pop it in the kitchen. Well, just through the door that's some of it. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Everybody's so. Anyway, yeah. get your graphic <laughs> nubbing case. <laughs> <laughs> I was told you that I did not. Throw it back. <laughs> <laughs> like we need the beard back for it. May. So you can't trap me. I've got like ten left. Steve, take care. Will do. Steve. Oh, you can't trap me. Oh, you 